Today we're here to talk about how superheroes are saving the real world. We're gonna explore the relationship between fantasy, reality, and real world impact. I think I have a panel of uh, superheroes myself today. Wilmer Valderrama. <laughs> Next we have Mr. Blair Underwood. <laughs> Trevor Goring. And lastly, we have Dr. Robin Rosenberg. Who was the first superhero that really made an impact on you? I grew up in Venezuela and South America, so the first hero I met was my dad, right? Because my dad was, was the example of what I wanted to be. You know, he was a great father, and he made crazy sacrifices uh, for, uh, for the sake of our family. And for me, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have my parents in the household and you know my dad who taught me how to be a dad and, and, my, and, and my mother and their relationship um, they're still married to this day so they're in many ways my role model we have a twitter question that came in and jess asks if you could have any power to help someone else for a day what would you choose and why i'm currently doing minority report and in minority report um there is these three precogs that can see you know they can piece together these premonitions and eventually they become some type of prediction if i could get a glimpse on somebody's future and see something either tragic or troublesome that, that I could help stop, I think that would be a cool, a cool power to have. Maybe the superpower to have is everybody understanding each other, and speaking the same language. I think when you have racism, we have hatred mm -hmm. of other people, it's because we don't understand each other. People learn from walking, having empathy, basically, walking in other people's shoes. So if I could kind of just like, like put the head of the KKK like in Compton for a day or something. <laughs> I think you just it. came up with a movie. <laughs> One of the studies that we're, we're planning to do is that walking, literally walking in someone else's shoes. It's walking while black, walking while Hispanic, walking while Asian. It's so to give people the sense of what does it feel like to be different. We're creative people. I'm looking around this room. We're all creative people. So often, just, just from the actor's perspective, so often, you know, growing up, we're misunderstood in class because our mind is spinning in a whole other place. You know, when I did a, the, the project in treatment, which was about people in therapy, and literally for 30 minutes, it's two actors talking. It's a, it's a patient and a therapist talking. And I had a number of people come up to me and say, uh, specifically African-American men saying, I'm going through therapy. We have never seen a black man on television going through therapy. There was something really pure about Spider-Man, you know? Because um, I was, when I was really young, I could really relate to that, to the teenage phenomenon of actually growing up, you know, and, and, and navigating through the world. And when you really look at the metaphorical journey of Spider-Man, um, it's really everything a young person goes through, except he, he's going through it in the most extraordinary way. Doctor Strange is a great character because he has to transform to get the powers of mysticism. He starts off as this very self-censored surgeon, has an accident, goes on a journey to try and find a cure, but he has to look inside for the cure. He can't perform all that magic by being the way he was before. What does happiness mean to you? What does that look like to you? It can be like a typical day, it can be what just, what makes you smile? I'm from the South, so we speak to everybody. You walk down the street, hey, what's up, how you doing? How you doing, boy, what's going on, man? You know, so we always speak to each other, so, you know, that makes me smile. My dad said to me when I was super young, he said, you know, be the first one to say hello. And you find the most unexpected smiles, you know, from people. If you're walking by somebody and you're, you're, you know, you're within a couple of feet, it's, you know, it's okay to say hello first. Something like that just creates a certain level of harmony around you, where it empowers you to be more comfortable with, with, with where you are. When I'm the first one to say hello, I feel like I've set it now a stage for me to be comfortable. As a psychologist, happiness is a transient state. It's not possible to be happy permanently. We, our baseline shifts. So mo treasure moments of happiness. They're like moments of grace. They're not meant to be permanent. Oh my God, I love that. Thanks y'all so much for coming. It was thank so you fun. Guys and thank for you being guys today. so we much. Appreciate you guys coming. How thank great you. were they?